Hi everybody, I'm Sarah and welcome to the Big Blue House Homestead. Today I'm going to share the second part to a recipe video that I had started. The first one is actually for Z sauce or tzatziki sauce. So if you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch it so you can understand the whole purpose of me putting this together to begin with. All I'm going to do today is show you a very simple go-to meal that I love. I eat this all the time. I love it during my garden seasons and I get it all the time when I'm just craving something really yummy and gooey and a little bit more healthier than, you know, processed foods. Um, very simple. It's basic ingredients and most people have these things in their home. All I'm using today are some mushrooms and a green pepper, which I have half of one that I've already used before. And then I've got some yellow onion. You can use whatever onion you prefer. I like all onions, so it doesn't matter to me. And then I do have a tomato because I like to finish off with a tomato. On top of that, I have the Z sauce that I made. So if you're curious about that, it is a cucumber based sauce. It's very yummy. I have the Z sauce. I have some provolone cheese. I prefer white cheeses with this. So if I had a Munster, I would use it. Or if I had a Havarti, I would use it as well. But a white cheese is what I prefer. And then we're just gonna use some regular store-bought tortillas because I didn't make any and I haven't been able to perfect that yet. So until I get that done, I still buy them from the store. Very simple, just sauteed and put in. First things first though, you want to have a nice hot pan because you want this to act almost as if you're grilling these vegetables. If you have a grill pan or a griddle pan that you can do that on, that's excellent. Use that instead. I don't have one of those. I do have a grill outside, but I don't use it. Mainly my husband does. And I have always done this just in a very hot pan on the stove. So I've got my pan over here and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on probably to about a six or a seven to get it kind of hot. And then we'll start talking about the veggies and show you what I'm doing. Okay, if you are not very quick at cutting up your vegetables, then you can just always cut these up first and then go back and do that afterwards to heat up your pan. But I'm pretty fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and just throw it all together really quickly. I've already washed everything that's here. I do use all of my scraps as a compost, so if you haven't done that, go ahead and start thinking about that. Just going to take my green pepper because that needs to go first. Green peppers always take the longest to cook. But while my pan's getting hot, I just cut mine into big strips, big handful, and then I do have the two little pieces from before. But what I need to do now is check my pan heat. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some oil in this because I want to start working on my peppers while I get my mushrooms and my onion cut. I just use olive oil. You can use whatever type of oil you want. Uh, I wouldn't recommend butter because it's not going to do the same effect. You want it to not stick. So you want to use an oil. So I'm putting a little bit of olive oil in here. I'm not going to use a whole lot because I don't want it greasy. And then all I'm going to do is take my veggies and throw it in and hopefully you can hear the sizzle. I'm just going to cut this into strips and rounds as if I was going to put it on a burger and use as much onion as you prefer. I like a lot of onion, so I'm going to do two, maybe let's just throw in three today, three strips. Very easy. Once you get all your skins off and your onions are ready, I just like to take my knife and cut them in half. And that's how I get all my onions. You can break them up here or break them up in your pan because I'm trying to do this quick saute. I wanna go ahead and break them up here so I don't have to worry about damaging my other produce. But onions go in next. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a spatula because I wanna be able to toss this around so it doesn't all burn. And I'm just going to move my onions and peppers together. And very simple. just. Mixing them together evenly. If you aren't familiar with doing vegetables at home like this, adding a little bit of salt is going to go ahead and help them saute down and go a little more translucent so that they soften quicker. So I'm just doing a small sprinkle of salt because I do low sodium. And then I immediately mix again because I want to make sure that I get that salt coated. All right, so now we're going to let that go ahead and cook and we're going to work on the rest of our vegetables. All right, next step's going to be to get these mushrooms sliced up. Uh, however many mushrooms you want. Actually, I could probably eat a whole container at one time of mushrooms. It's one of my favorite vegetables, but I'm just going to slice those up. 
I don't add my mushrooms in until after these are halfway cooked, and then that way I'm not burning things at the same time. So in the meantime, I can push my mushrooms to the side, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my tomato ready. I don't cook the tomato, I leave the tomato on fresh. It's just something that I prefer. You could always cook it if that's what you like tomatoes to be, but I like the freshness. It's almost like eating, you know, sliced tomato on your burgers or on your sandwiches. And I just cut them into thin little strips. Uh, you'll see why in a minute, but I've already got that ready. So all of my prep work is done and I'm just gonna do my cooking now. All right, just a little tip. When you saw that I showed the green pepper, it was actually in a bag. Well, instead of just throwing this straight into my trash, I'm gonna go ahead and put my half of my tomato in it. And that way I can save on the bags. It saves a little bit of money. And it also helps your landfills not get so full. So all of that's ready. And we're just going to saute the vegetables. Um, you want to get a little bit of a browning effect. That's why I like to have a high pan. I'm not sure if you can tell. You can kind of see where they're starting to brown up some. That's the way I prefer them. Because it gives that charred grilled flavor. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to cook those. I can add at this point any seasonings I want, but I don't do a whole lot. I just like to do a little bit of pepper. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of seasoned salt just to add a little extra flavor. And that's just to season the vegetables themselves. When I use my Z sauce, that has majority of the flavor that I need. So don't add garlic because that's going to have enough garlic. And if you have too much garlic, then it's going to be really overpowering. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and stir my seasonings in. All right, once your onions start to get a little translucent, that's when you want to go ahead and throw in the mushrooms. So let me show you again what I'm working with. You can see how they're starting to go clear. You can see some of the charring starting on my peppers. That's what I'm looking for. So at this point, I'm going to throw in all of my mushroom pieces. And like I said, use as much or as little of any of these ingredients as you want. You can add meat to this if you prefer to have meat. I mean, if you're going to add leftover, meats. That's great. They're already pre-cooked. So you can slice them up at this point and add them in with your mushrooms. If you're doing raw meat, cook it before you cook your vegetables. I think that's a safer way to go. You're not looking at any cross contaminations. All right. And now all we're doing is we're just sauteing the vegetables until they're completely cooked. I don't pay so much attention to the pepper part because I like them to have a little bit of crunch. But what I want is I want these mushrooms to actually cook because I don't want them raw. I want them to have a little bit of a uh, flavor coming out as they've cooked down some. This normally only takes me about five minutes to throw together, and that's why I say it's one of my favorite go-to meals, because I spend more time prepping and waiting for cheese to melt than I do actually cooking vegetables. Okay, so while we're waiting for these vegetables to finish cooking, I'm actually going to go ahead and get my plate ready, and that way I have it available to move things onto, and I'm going to get out the tortillas. I normally only eat one uh, if you have a bigger appetite than I do, go ahead and put two down. There's plenty here, and sometimes I will eat them as a leftover, or I have kids that will eat it. And that's a good thing about my children is they eat a lot of these same vegetables and meals that I do. So cooking sometimes isn't always that crazy. I can just make one meal and share. But I've got my tortillas on the my tortilla on the plate. I got my vegetables still going, and now we're just waiting for them to finish. And they probably only need maybe another minute. All right, so it looks like my vegetables are almost done. Uh, the mushrooms have cooked down really nicely. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and push all of my vegetables to one side of the pan. I find this easier, especially when you're going to coat with cheese or make anything gooey or whatever. Having it all in one section is easier. I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner off as well because I no longer need to cook the vegetable, but I want the heat for my cheese. It's up to you whether you use a lot of cheese or a little bit. I'm gonna put a piece of provolone. I've got space to put a second. And like I said, it's enough for two or three people, depending on how you eat it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my other piece of cheese. And you can see there where I just laid the provolone cheese onto it. Quick way to get this to melt faster. I have two tips. One, you can actually put a lid on, or two, you can add a little bit of water and the steam will work. So let me get a measuring cup. You like those squeaky cabinets? And you really only need maybe a teaspoon of water, so I'm just going to do a little drizzle, and you'll hear it sear up. Let me show you. 
All right, and Sage is adding that little bit of water. See how quickly this cheese started to melt? That's what I was looking for, is ooey gooey, cheesy, melty cheese right here on top of the vegetables. If you want to omit the cheese, that's perfectly fine. I prefer the cheese. A, it holds my veggies together a little better. And B, I like the gooeyness of it, especially on days where I'm looking to enjoy this meal. This is one of my favorite meals. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and remove part of it and put it onto the actual tortilla because I'm not going to eat all of this. You can see it all dripping and gooey and cheesy. And I just lay it down the center of the tortilla the best way that I can. And remember to take your pan off the burner because if not, you're going to end up toasting these a little too much. So right down the center. And again, preference is up to you on how you want to do this. I'm going to let mine cool just a little bit because I don't want to eat it where it's really, really hot. It's going to burn my mouth. So I'm going to let it cool. But all I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to get my tomatoes. And I'm just going to lay my tomatoes on one section, however many pieces you prefer. And that way when I fold this almost like a taco, I have the tomato in the middle. And then on top of that, I need to do... Sorry, I was washing my hands. On top of that, I need to do the Z sauce, but if it's too hot, it's gonna melt and make this really messy. So I'm gonna let it cool for a minute and we'll come back in a second and I'll show you the, the finished product. So what I'm gonna do is just spoon on some of this Z sauce. And again, this is your preference on how much you want. I like mine gooey and messy because who doesn't like a messy sandwich? If it drips down your fingers and you have to lick them, that's the best part. So I put about half of the mixture that I actually made onto this. Very simple way to eat it. You're just going to fold it like you would a taco. Make sure you keep your tomatoes in, but fold it like you would a taco. If you use larger wraps, you're more than welcome to go ahead and fold that all up and make like a burrito size wrap. And that's good too. I'm going to go sit down and I'm going to enjoy this. This is more than enough for me to eat at this moment. I usually don't do a lot of sides, but if you want chips, you want fries, whatever else you want, throw it on there. This is one of those things that I will eat probably more in a year than anything else. It is my favorite go-to meal. Just peppers, onions, mushrooms, little sliced tomato, and Z sauce. Okay, so I wrapped this up a little bit quicker than I probably should have, maybe sped through some, but the smells in my kitchen are amazing, and I want to sit down and eat this meal. So I'm going to go ahead and go do that. But I do want to thank you guys for stopping by, and if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to share my videos, that would be awesome. And if you want to subscribe, even more awesome. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.